Hello and welcome to the SciFest Movie Talk episode. So in this episode I'll be discussing Disney's classic live action 1985 fantasy adventure Return to Oz as directed by Walter Merch and as based on L. Frank Baum's Oz novels is 1904 works The Marvelous Land of Oz and 1907's Ozma of Oz. Bit of a mouthful. Uh, the movie serves as a spiritual sequel to the 1939 MGM musical classic The Wizard of Oz, but was not actually made by any of those involved in the aforementioned movie, nor with MGM's involvement. So technically, although the movie continues the adventures of its main protagonist, Dorothy Gale, as played by Fereza Balk in this entry, it is not considered official canon. Um, not many of the actual sequels to Wizard of Oz actually are. However, for me, this has always actually been the sequel to the original Wizard of Oz. And learning different hasn't really changed my mind. Um, <laughs> the tone and delivery of this movie is a drastic deviation from the original, bringing a very much darker, very darker story. Yet it still remains distinctly optimistic. Thanks very much to Balk's portrayal as Dorothy. She brings a different energy to the role than Julie, uh, Julie, Judy, Judy Garland did, or indeed as her daughter Liza Minnelli did in the official animated sequel 1972's Journey Back to Oz. But she still carries the role uh, with certainty and reverence to the character as a whole, and quickly and comfortably makes it her own. The movie picks up six months after the events of the original story, following Dorothy's return to Kansas, who, you know, it, he's now kind of finding it difficult to reconcile the fantasy of Oz against that stark kind of reality, with those around her kind of in despair against a kind of mental health as a result. Her parents, as played by Papa Lori and Matt Clark, are at the wit's end. Look to an extreme new treatment, electroshock, to rid their daughter's head of the nonsense of Oz. A scary and terrifyingly traumatic procedure run by charlatans doing more harm than good. With the aid of a mysterious young girl who appears to Dorothy in her room, the two escape the sanatorium into the woods during a torrential storm where Dorothy seeks refuge on a floating chicken coop to escape the clutches of the fearsome Ness Wilson as played by Jean Marsh who follows in relentless pursuit. Miraculously, Dorothy survives and awakes the next day accompanied by a talking chicken named Belina as voiced by Denise Breyer and soon she realises, of course, that she has somehow managed to make it back to Oz. Although, things don't quite seem quite all that vibrant and welcoming as they once did when she last visited. Oz has now fallen under the rule of a ruthless tyrant known as the Gnome King, as voiced by Nicole Williamson, with the aid of one of Oz's remaining witches, Mombi, as played by Jean Marsh. Um, and, you know, they have taken one of Dorothy's friends prisoner, the Scarecrow, as played by Justin Case, and turned everybody else in the Emerald City to stone. It then becomes up to Dorothy to change the fate of Oz and its inhabitants, and along with some new friends, the enchanted Jack-O-Lantern, known as Jack Pumpkinhead, as voiced by Brian Henson, a clockwork mechanical soldier of Oz, uh, known as TikTok. Yeah, TikTok, as voiced by Sean Barrett, and something that can only be described as a flying sofa with a moose head attached uh, on, or the gump, um, as it's affectionately called, as voiced by Lyle Conway. They then go on a mission to track down and defeat the Gnome King and Mombi in order to return Oz and its inhabitants to all of their spectacular glory. So... This movie is in completely stark contrast to Dorothy's original outing. This is a tale befitting of the Brothers Grimm, to be fair. There's little joy left in Oz and the dazzling colours, the energetic songs and optimism have been basically replaced with gangs, dark witchcraft, certain peril, perhaps even death and a more sadistically macabre twist on that classic tale. For those expecting a direct sequel to the original, you won't find it here. Not in tone, at least. Yet this does actually 
once you let go and kind of absorb into its ever kind of more encompassing story, begin to feel like we are back indeed in Oz. This is not, strictly speaking, a film for younger children, um, although it looks like it may be aimed that way. You might have expected it to be, you know, given its connection to The Wizard of Oz, of course, and indeed it being a Disney and all. There are quite a number of kind of scarier elements that feature in this dark world and can often kind of catch you off guard and deals with a number of more adult themes, despair and mild horror that may, <laughs> that may not resonate all that well. Especially if you have certainly been into that, you know, the original's kind of light and fancy free kind of rhetoric. It's a much darker, more serious take on the tale to begin with, yielding a very, very bleak outlook and a distinctly more lacklustre version of Oz that to begin with when we first arrive could have just been somebody's backyard. But this movie actually builds on the fantasy elements as it moves forward. What starts out looking fairly drab and dreary starts to evolve and, you know, into something much more fantastical, as it should. And although it does stay quite dark for the most part, it's Bulk's optimism and innocent charm as Dorothy that keeps the movie from kind of tipping over. It is and remains a brilliant fantasy, opening a new chapter of adventure in the land of Oz that dares to set itself apart from the original, starkly and with a jolt. It builds in more and more fantastical elements as Dorothy discovers more about Oz and its fate, as we meet more and more wonderfully eccentric and colourfully played characters that really do well to contrast against the great and dull version of Oz we set upon first. This time the lines between reality and fantasy are blared even more, with Oz seemingly able to have more of a direct influence on reality. It's left much more to our imagination to ponder whether or not Dorothy's adventures in Oz this time round were real or not. An angle I did appreciate more and more this time around, although still not perhaps quite as debatable as I would have liked. Regardless, anyway, of its darker tone, it is still a very enchanting adventure that certainly opens up more possibilities within the land of Oz and features some quite amazing special effects and decent puppetry throughout. I mean, you know, Brian Henson, Jim Henson's son, I think. Yeah, you know, it's an adventure akin to the 1984 movie, The Never Ending Story. In fact, many of the special effects appear in a very, I would say, similar mold. It's not quite as bold as the adventure in, you know, The Never Ending Story, but it certainly is as, as endearing, I think, and very reminiscent of the styles and themes used at the time the movie was released. I love the way that the movie does really kind of build on the universe of Oz in a very slow and often very subtle way, and none more so than the effects and process used with the Gnome King, who, when we do finally meet, becomes more and more human as Dorothy and her friends try their hand at a guessing game to save the Scarecrow. But only kind of little by little, which at first is barely noticeable what's happening. At first it's just kind of a face in the rock, and then through some kind of amazing kind of special effects transitioning, um, he emerges from the wall kind of piece by piece. It is quite something else once you kind of realise what's going on right in front of your own face. Overall, it cannot be denied that this movie has a completely different style and aesthetic to the original, bringing a much darker fantasy adventure, pretty steampunk at times, um, that has a very bleak outlook, sometimes even sinister. It is, for the most part, played as a continuation of the original movie, although technically not considered officially canon to it, and although it does have quite the kind of twisted, more maddening vibe, I, I still think it serves itself well as a sequel when all said and done. Ozzy's in, in perilous trouble here, and, and the stark of contrast against the bright kind of musical extravaganza that is the original works well to serve this movie's themes. Not only that, but both the original and this movie play well to the styles and themes used familiar with audiences at the time. And although both are starkly different in both tone and cinematography, they are, in my opinion, 
equally as, as enchanting and bring Oz alive in their own particular way. This movie certainly has quite the imagination and opens up Oz to a whole new set of possibilities which ends up being an extremely engrossing and creative adventure. I've, I've always found it an engaging diversion and a lovely way to add some contrast to the world of Oz. So, that brings me to the end of this episode. Many thanks for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a like. Please do hit that subscribe button for more movie reviews, trailer reactions, and other movie-related content. Absolutely loved having you here at South First Movie Talk and definitely love to have you back. Most of all, just thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.